to hand over to you guys now. Thank you. Thank you, Dara. Um, I'm going to do a, a quick introduction. My name is Kate Sangster and I'm based in South Ayrshire, Adult Literacies and ESOL Senior here. And I want to just thank Dara for inviting us to do this because it's been a, a nice wee reflection point for us um, as we've, we've gone through the preparations for today, which have been extensive, I have to say. Um, I want to introduce um, our, our dream team. Um, it's not Angela Cassidy, actually it is greg cassidy um and we just need to kind of get that clarified going forward and Anne marie hunter Anne marie's from north ayrshire and our roles Hi. here in this are, are very very similar because i suppose we were counterparts if you like so Anne marie is my counterpart in north ayrshire pamela beck pamela, Hi. oh she's here good stuff Hi, Pamela. Pamela is the counterpart from East Ayrshire. And um, what we want to do today is just to give you a wee bit of an insight. Um, please don't worry, I've not totally um, explained who Greg is, but he's got a really pivotal role today because he's in charge of the actual PowerPoint. Um, and he's going to take you through um, the points for, for discussion. Pamela and Anne-Marie are actually going to be, can keep a wee follow on the chat. So if going through, if there's anything you want to raise, please do that. And then at the end, we would welcome any questions that you, you have that you want to ask us. Okay, so I'm going to hand over just now to Greg Cassidy, um, just to take us through the, the PowerPoint. Thank you, Greg. Hello. Can everybody see my presentation? Yes. Yeah, I can't see it, unfortunately. <laughs> now, what's happened there? Um, I can't actually see it. Can you still, if I move the slide on, can you see the second slide? Yes. Right, great, I'll go back to first. Okay, well, thank you very much for the introduction, Kate. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I hope our presentation gives you a good sense of how we've been working together in uh, Ayrshire over the last couple of years. Just a reminder, I can hear a little bit of echo, so you may want to um, silence your, your mic. Um, okay, so we need to say, first of all, that we don't view this presentation as a statement that we've arrived, as it were, or have already achieved definitive success. Rather, we view it as a kind of summary of the journey we're on. Uh, you will not see a list of ESOL classes or units. Instead, we're focused on decisions that we take to enable, encourage and improve participation in ESOL in Ayrshire. As Kate mentioned, there are four partners working together to help ESOL learners make progress in their English um, that we know can be life-changing for them, their children and their partners. We've put our email addresses on the screen at the end. If anyone wants to contact us for more information, we'd be happy to reply to anybody in any questions. So if you're not familiar with Ayrshire, Gateway to the South, here's a map of where we are. Ayrshire College's Cowanin campus is in North Ayrshire, our Air campus is in South Ayrshire, and our Kilmarnock campus is in East Ayrshire. Oops. So I'll just go back. Um, the population of the councils uh, ranges from 135,000 in North Ayrshire to 112,000 in South Ayrshire. And East Ayrshire kind of sits right in the middle with about 122,000 people. There is a difference in the demographic of ESOL learners across the councils. And this is probably particularly noticeable for resettled Syrian refugees. North Ayrshire has by far the most resettled refugees it also has a high proportion of families with young children. That doesn't tend to exist in the, to the same extent in the east or in the south. Um, although numbers are important, they're only really half the story. And we'd like to go back around four years to highlight how our journey together has changed up to the present day. We wanted this slide to try and capture the change from planning separately where we were viewing priorities only within our local authority to where we are now. And that is we're jointly planning and prioritising activity across the whole of Ayrshire. 
We're trying to ensure that we have a consistent approach in how we help learners transition from community provision anywhere in Ayrshire to the college in each of its sites. We're also trying to maximise our shared resources and schedule courses to avoid gaps or duplication of provision. We hope that what you can see in these bullet points is definitely a move from planning separately to actually prioritising collectively. And that's where we are now. This change wasn't achieved in one dramatic jump. Rather, each year we took small steps towards greater collaboration. And that journey continues today. None of us would describe our partnership as skipping hand in hand through a field of flowers. But we are willing to take a long term view of our partnership. And sometimes that means we disagree, but we're still always um, keeping the partnership talking and taking action. One thing that has helped us take action is a mission statement that we created at the end of 2020. It captures what we think is important to us and helps us share our priorities concisely with the staff closest to our learners across Ayrshire. So here are the three points we've included in the mission statement. Our goal is really to enable, encourage and improve participation in ESOL. If the mission statement tells us what we want to achieve, then what actions are we actually are, have been working well for us to achieve the, the mission statement? From the top to the bottom of the screen, here are some thoughts about it. First of all, defining success. We've always discussed together what success looked like for the learners. Of course, we want to increase the numbers of learners, but our focus is on improving the experience for the students or the learners and for our staff. Also, discussing challenges. As I mentioned before, although we don't always agree, we keep talking to overcome challenges when they come up. A partnership of four organisations can sometimes encounter situations where there's gaps in the flow of information leading to unintentional, unintentional misinformation. We're aware that this can happen, so we're always trying to avoid rushing to judgment. The other thing would be understanding our role. Apart from Kate, we are, we are managers and we don't deliver ESOL. Instead, we manage the staff and plan how best to use limited resources for maximum effect to achieve our mission statement. We rarely, as a group, if ever, discuss units. Our focus is, our focus is on the smooth transition of learners between levels across Ayrshire. Communication has also, also been an aspect of focused on. We've created a website to help our staff understand the range of provision across the issue. So that they in turn can help connect learners to the correct level of provision. Great, great. Yes. Great, great. Just to move slightly in towards the computer, just some people are losing the sounds. It's when you go off to the side slightly. Oh, okay. Sorry. Apologies. Yeah, no bother. Thank so, yeah, so we've created a, a website to help our staff understand the range of provision across Ayrshire so that they in turn can help connect learners to the kind of correct level of provision wherever it's happening. You'll find the website at www.esolayrshire, that's all one word, .co.uk. So go in and have a wee look. Also, meetings has been an aspect that we've focused on. We've moved away from meeting to talk about how we divide up money to meeting to actually prioritise our shared long-term goals. That is, again, enabling, encouraging, and improving participation across Ayrshire. The final graphic there is about training. We've provided training for our staff, sharing good practice between the community staff and college staff, and helping them to connect and build relationships. This year, we're also delivering a PDA intro to tutoring, ESOL qualification for our staff. I said earlier that we're not holding ourselves up as successful, but we do discuss how we want to measure success. We sometimes think about success as, a num as the number of people who access our classes or are working towards accreditation. We obviously are delighted when numbers increase, but by far the most frequent way we think about success is how we improve the experience for our learners and staff. For example, we ask ourselves, 
Are transition points smooth between courses? Does the college experience remove barriers? Or do we actually present obstacles to success in our own processes and methods of delivery? Do students know who they can who they who can support them at key transition points in their learning journey from the community to college? These questions are important to us, and we jointly funded an ESOL coordinator role this year, managed through the college to ensure that we build and support smooth transitions, as well as creating a consistent point of contact between the community and the college. So how do we plan for the future? This can't be a return to all of our pre-COVID arrangements. The coming months as we nudge our way out of pandemic will bring time to reflect on what we can bring with us from this time and what we perhaps can leave behind. Here are our thoughts on where we want to focus our planning and collaboration in future. So I highlighted four areas that come to mind for the future. First of all, blended learning. The question here is, how do we deliver ESOL in future to meet the needs of individuals? The social side of learning through speaking and listening with others may not be a strength of remote learning or blended learning, but blended learning can actually offer flexibility for learners that may suit their time and the balance of other commitments that they have. Another aspect that we've been talking about recently is digital literacy. Many of our learners have been recently given or own digital devices. However, to what extent does their digital literacy present a barrier during blended learning? And how do we work together to remove that barrier quickly to support learning? Another aspect is the quality and the enhancement process. We intend to look at how we build on the knowledge and processes within the community and the college in ways that help all staff give learners the best experiences and move from community to college. And the bottom right hand side, we've got the learner voice. How do we actually capture the voice of learners to inform our future plans? We need to understand what works for the individuals from their perspective. Also, what works in each local authority? They do have a lot of a lot in common, the local authorities, but there's differences as well. We need to acknowledge that. What would the learners say creates a smooth transition for them as they move from community to college and beyond? We're going to look at how we can capture that and then use it to inform our future plans. Well, I've reached the end of this brief presentation and here are our contact details if anybody wants to get in touch later on. Uh, I'll now open it up for comment, questions, or reviewing any quotes that have been submitted during the presentation. Thank you very much. Greg, thank you. Oh, sorry, I've now got the echo a bit. Sorry. Greg, thank you very much for that. Um, I'm sure there are lots of points that came up in your presentation there that, that participants will want more information on. Um, just to say a reminder that we are going to share all the presentations out. We'll share this recording so you'll get all the contact details as well as things as well. If you can put into the, the chat facility if you have resources to share, we'll also share the website that, that Greg and the team mentioned. So um, just before we, we move on, if anyone's got any questions, I haven't noticed anything. Susan, have you noticed anything? Um, and Pamela and Anne Marie in the in the chat facility, or will we just move on just now? No questions, no. Okay. Um. Thank you. Thanks, folks. As I say, hopefully we'll have some time at the end as well. We can come back. Um. So we're now going to move on to Stephen from Aberdeenshire, if that's okay. And just to give Stephen a, a wee ch chance to to get up and running and to um set up just. Thank you very much. That was obviously an overview of the partnership and the, the processes, which was great. Stephen's going to share with us an, an example of what their collaborative working in Aberdeenshire has done and how it's allowed them to move their ESOL to a digital platform. Thank you, Stephen. I'll hand over to you now. Thanks, Dara. So hopefully everyone's able to, to see that. Uh, I'm using two screens, so I will try and keep an eye on on anyone waving uh, waving their hands at me. But I will likely miss things, uh, and it's it is a PowerPoint <clears throat> presentation. But hopefully, it's not going to be too heavy. Uh, and Dara's told me I've only got ten ten minutes, so I'm going to try and run through it quickly, and then we can get any to any questions or uh, comments afterwards. 
our, our Aberdeenshire ESOL provision is, is also a partnership provision. Uh, that's through the Community Learning Partnership. That's ourselves as Aberdeenshire Council, Aberdeen City, North East College, the WE as the sort of main providers in the North East of Scotland. Other community provision does exist. Uh, it usually follows a community cafe model and is usually provided by the likes of uh, community churches uh, and, and other third sector organisations uh, like that. So uh, we were quite lucky in January uh, last year, so that would have been January 2020 before uh, COVID had arrived in the UK. We'd started a, a sort of partnership project with ESCOL, the National Digital School, uh, to look into providing ESOL lessons across our, our, our local authority area. Uh, the way that that worked was there was two preparation lessons. We then did one practice lesson for staff and sort of uh, an end review of that pilot. We were really looking for sort of a proof of concept and we've also got a sort of draft report of our experience available and practice examplars as well. So you'll see from the photos that we were going with a blend blended uh, uh, environment. We had 13 learners registered and uh, we went through six lessons of an average of two hours, uh, two hours apiece and eight learners attended each session. As we all know, not all ESOL learners will attend the, the same provision at the same time. So people did attend for one lesson, went there the second, but did come back for the third lesson. We had learners attending from home. We had learners attending uh, from a community center where we set up, uh, as you can see in the photo, with a smart board, a webcam and uh, a microphone. So from very little technical uh, investment, we were able to, to create our own blended classroom. And eSchool was providing from Stornoway uh, at, the main, at the main building in Stornoway, but also through uh, the, the teacher's home uh, elsewhere in the island. As I said, it's, it is basic IT equipment that's needed. You don't need anything anything fancy. So that sort of morphed in in, uh, in March of 2020 when all face-to-face -face contact was stopped. We were able to move our entire ESOL provision as well as our whole community learning and development program online for both our adult learning, working with young people and community development. Uh, we, we went with uh, G Suite for Education. It's now Google Workplace for Education. They like changing uh, the names quite often. And our main tools are Google Meet, Google Classroom, and for sort of secure one-to-ones, we utilize the, the NHS Attend Anywhere. We've had over 65 CLD staff volunteers trained in the use of Google Classroom and uh, Google Meet. And we are continuing to deliver uh, at the moment uh, a wide range of, of qualifications. Uh, okay. We run roughly 15 ESOL classes a week at the moment. Uh, that's across a, a variety of times, a variety of locations. Uh, some groups uh, are retained within the group that they were originally a physical class. Other classes have been, been mixed as well. Some classes are specific for certain levels according to the SQA uh, accreditation that they're working towards. Other classes are, are mixed as, as well. As I said, we're running about 15 sessions a week, roughly two hours each. We've got over 100 learners attending, and we've also done a large exercise of contacting all the learners. So we've emailed over 75 of them. We've also sent letters and telephone calls offering uh, online support, trying to get people involved in, in our online provision. We also recognize that online isn't for every learner, so we've been trying different methods of communication, different methods of engagement to make sure that we're trying to reach everyone that we were working with physically and also everyone that's engaging with us in a new in the new format. Uh, 
we've had quite a lot of social media recognition that online, sorry, that we've had a lot of social media success. We've had uh, a lot of posts go out through the Aberdeenshire Council, uh, Twitter, WordPress, websites sort of highlighting what's available. And that has generated uh, new, new learners for, for us and the ESOL partnership. As you can see, we're also making use of WhatsApp, uh, broadcast groups that the learners are all in, and that's for their own informal support that they've sort of set up and that we're included in. We've captured learner voice through that uh, at different times during the pandemic, but it's also been used, as I'll show shortly, for the use of uh, continuous assessment. So gathering evidence that, that learners are, are working on at different times, we can post up uh, an exercise, a learner can then take a photo and that can then be returned to them digitally. Uh, a lot of learners use WhatsApp, we found to communicate with their families overseas or just within their local communities. So it's a, it's a platform that they are uh, knowledgeable about and experienced in using. Uh, our main sort of work, if we're gathering evidence or if we're gathering uh, sort of uh, gathering evidence and also what, what what work they're doing takes place in, in Google Classroom as our virtual learning environment. And that's a sort of very low level uh, virtual learning environment. It's not the same as Blackboard. It's not the same as uh, your sort of college or university ones. There's a lot less to it but it also comes with the benefit that it's it's google so people are familiar with 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 how to use use it uh, our current provision, so we chose G Suite. Uh, it, we chose that for a variety of reasons. It has a single sign-on and provides both a virtual learning environment and face-to-face -face virtual software. So that's Google Meet. That's what we're all in at the moment. It also benefits from a full online package of office tools, documents, slides, and it's fully compatible with mobile, tablet, and Chromebook devices. Uh, the potential drawback is that the package is all online. And as we know, not all learners have laptops or tablet devices. However, this is also a mixed benefit as learners don't need to download any software. It's all in the cloud and it's sort of a click and go. You can email them in the form or pr provide that information to them in a form that you're already using so that they can click into, into your online meetings. Uh, G, for, G Suite for Education is free, uh, and that's free for anyone in education. Uh, as CLD, we were able to argue the point that we are providing education and education service. We are an SQA center, uh, and our youth work team are working directly with, with young people as well. There is a small cost uh, if you go for the enterprise versions, which include things like breakout rooms, uh, polling, and question and answer compared to other platforms that is a low cost per year so there is also that benefit uh, it is a secure platform there have been data protection impact assessments done and glow has uh, google embedded in it as one of the platforms we had to purchase a domain that is a minimum cost of a couple of pounds per year and any IT department or team or any IT knowledgeable person should be able to do that as well we were approved and registered by Google as an education provider, as I've said, that was as a higher education institute. We've rolled out our Google accounts to learners, staff and volunteers, and we've provided CPD on that. So how do I log in? How do I do the exercises? How, how do I use the package? Uh, we have limited investment in G Suite for Enterprise for some accounts. Uh, as I've said, that provides the added functions, but your Google admin is also able to move those accounts from person to person if needed. So if you did only, if you were only able to put in a small investment of say five accounts, you can still use those five accounts between different people. You're just moving the license from person to person when they're when they're needing it. Security was one of the big things that we were constantly looking at. So our learner and volunteer accounts are restricted. So we've made sure that they can only email our, our .gov.uk email addresses or at Aberdeenshire CLD 
www.ofsite.co.uk email addresses. That means our volunteers and learners can communicate directly with one another in a safe and secure environment, and they're not having to pass one another their personal mobile phone numbers, Gmail addresses, email addresses, or anything like that. So some of the barriers that we've come across, uh, as I'm sure everyone will, will relate to, is a lack of devices and connection, especially around Wi-Fi and data. We've overcome in part through the use of Connecting Scotland, and we as a service have also uh, used some of our, our learner devices that we had uh, and just put fresh copies of Windows onto them and sort of loaned them out to learners that don't meet the Connecting Scotland criteria. There is a lack of ITC skills with some, some ESOL learners, but we've used sort of, we've tried to overcome that through using Google as a, as a, as a tool. Uh, it's a single sign on, everything is available for once you sign in, it's just click the nine dots and everything's there. Uh, we also use WhatsApp to help support the learners into, into the online groups. So our session leaders, our staff and our volunteers all are all able to support the learner through through uh, using WhatsApp to get onto Google if, if we have to. Time and family commitments impacting learning. We've tried to diversify our classes so that we're providing during the morning, afternoon and evening and the times were agreed with learners as to when worked best around family life. Uh, so, you know, uh, making sure that we're not doing things over a lunchtime, pick up or drop off of, of children uh, at school as well, or the, the sort of uh, education hubs. We also use homework and some recorded uh, material uh, as well. So we're able through Google to record our sessions as we're doing right now, and we can upload them to Google Classroom and everyone can see exactly uh, what's happening in that class if they miss it. So uh, opportunities and future plans. Uh, blended learning, I think, is here to stay. Uh, we're going to try and make sure our provision is more sustainable. So those that are living in uh, the, the deepest, darkest parts of Aberdeenshire that struggle with a mobile phone signal, uh, we're going to try and make sure that, that they're able to join in if, if they require any of our CLD provision. Uh, blended learning opportunities, as I've sort of said, allow learners to engage where they are so they can be attending from home, from work, uh, and from community centres. So we have made that commitment that face-to-face -face, it will continue, will come back when we're, when we're able to. It's not just going to be all online. Uh, what we're doing face-to-face, -face, we should also be able to offer online, even if it's recording and live streaming what, what we're doing. Uh, SQA assessments during during the current uh, lockdown, uh, well, previous to the current lockdown at sort of October, November time, we were able to do some socially distanced face-to-face -face assessments uh, and working with my colleague Lada, who's in the call, we are looking at doing online assessments uh, when, when we can. So that might be using uh, the tools that the SQA have or are promoting. Uh, and sort of, as we've said, the lessons can be recorded uh, for, for easy catch up and it makes things a wee bit more accessible if people haven't been able to, to attend uh, the lesson. We've got some useful links at the end. Uh, we've got our WordPress site. We've also got our YouTube channel, our adult learning Facebook page, and you can also follow uh, CLD Aberdeenshire on Twitter and my email address is, is there as well. So I'll stop sharing my screen. Stephen, that was um, fantastic. We have one question that I'll get to in a moment. But just before then, just to pick up on your last point about recording the lessons, I'm so glad that we can now record in Google Meet because I'm sure I'm not the only one who's going to go back and watch your both presentations over and over again and just pick bits out. And, and maybe the bit that I would like to just flag up, because there will be some people on the call who are thinking, oh, my God, they're so far ahead from where we are. It's just that reminder of you started this before the pandemic, um, that this process, you know, so many people out there are having to respond to what's there with all the challenges that brings. But this collaborative work of yours was kicked off um, before. So just to remind people of that, this hasn't happened overnight. No, no, it definitely hasn't happened overnight. And uh, as you said, Dara, we, we were 
in a lucky position if you want to use lucky like that to sort of say we we'd started that work in in january we were going through pilot classes coming to the end of our pilot program when when we had to move online so we'd already started the groundwork of acquiring google as our platform and and doing that that work Th thank you stephen i'll just ask the one question so i'm sure you can answer it quickly and then we'll, we'll move on to pauline the, the one that's there from moira was do your teachers have work mobiles to access whatsapp so we, we make use of uh, broadcast groups, so we're not sharing uh, personal information, mobile phone numbers and things like that. So they don't necessarily need uh, their own uh, their own work mobile. In some cases, some of our session sessional staff do have uh, work devices. And uh, as CLD workers and senior CLD workers, uh, usually a mobile phone is issued as part of our, our sort of kit as, as such. Okay, thank you, Stephen. In the interest of time, I'm going to have to move on, but I'm sure there'll be lots of people that we've had conversations with around WhatsApp who are now going to contact you and ask you to explain exactly how you did the last five or ten minutes with the, the broadcast. So thank you very much. And again, we'll be sharing the presentations, etc. at the end of this. And if it's okay, we're, we're going to move on to Pauline. So we've been at opposite ends of the country. We've been to the northeast and the southwest. And now Pauline's going to give us that national perspective from the Tecla Scotland. So thank you, Pauline, if you're able to share. Yeah, sorry, guys. I'm just having a... Uh, oh, okay. Sorry. So first, sorry, beg your pardon. First time I've presented in um, Google Meet, so... Can you just tell me that everybody can see that okay? Yeah, it's opening up now, Pauline. Thank you. We can see it now. And the same as before, I know you might not be able to see the chat. So Susan yeah. and I will be manning the chat and we'll let you know if any questions come up, Pauline. That's great. That's great. So um, hi, everybody. Thank you to Dera and the team for giving us the chance to have a chat to you today about Natekla Scotland. There's many of you attending today that I have met in various guises over the years, either as an ESO practitioner or as part of Natekla Scotland. But there are many people out there that don't know we exist and um, it's important I think especially the last year has definitely taught me it's so important to network and share what we're doing and really this sums up what Natekla Scotland is about. We are the Scottish branch of the biggest ESOL teaching association based in the UK. So our remit really is all about the ESOL practice that happens um, in Scotland. I have, I am very fortunate, and I know some of them are in the meeting today, to have a committee of nine people, incredible, passionate ESOL practitioners from all backgrounds. Uh, we run a branch that has been around since 2016. I was asked to revive it in 2016, but there has been a Scottish branch on and off um, since about the 80s, as far as I'm aware. I wish to dispel a myth because somebody once said to me at their last face-to-face um, -face, uh, conference that uh, Natekla or Natekla Scotland is only for college lecturers. This is absolutely not the truth. We are here to promote and support uh, practitioners from all walks of life, uh, college, local authority, third sector, and anything else that I have negated to mention there. We want to bring our Scottish practitioners together. We want to share what you do. We want to showcase what you do. And we want to share it outside of Scotland as well. One of my proudest um, parts of being part of the ESOL landscape in Scotland is for quite a small country, we really do have a huge breadth of skills, of experience, of innovative approaches. And I actually think just listening to our two presentations today, it really shows how incredible ESO practitioners are at stepping up to the mark and um, and 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 meeting challenges as they happen. And this year has certainly taught us that. So what is it that actually we do? So we are a group of people who want to help you with your jobs. That's it. To support you with resources, to pass on news and information. 
we have created a website that is a real has really become a repository for a huge amount of information. We have specialist pages on ESOL literacies for volunteer tutors, for teacher trainers, for teacher trainers, I beg your pardon. So specialist information for those particular aspects of ESOL. We have launched a webinar program um, this year. We are, have done two so far. They have Oh, we've had so much interest in them. It's been unbelievable. They are monthly, but they're also free. That's really important. Um, we have an annual conference, which um, this will be our fifth this year, which we have done face to face. And it's been so brilliant to be able to bring practitioners together to share their experiences and their knowledge, but also for ESOL practitioners to come together and spend time together chatting and networking. It's always hosted in November. We've also just put a call out for presenters, if anybody that's in the audience would be interested in sharing the work that they've done. There's two presentations I think might just uh, be quite interesting to share. And we're just about to launch a YouTube channel, which if you can see is bite-sized blethers about all things ESOL. This is us interviewing practitioners and um, places from around Scotland to tell us what they do, who they are, um, and, and, and everything in between to connect it with ESOL. So we want to share good practice because my goodness, there is so much good practice that goes on in Scotland. I mean, it just is incredible, um, the stuff that has happened in the last year, never mind in the umpteen years before this year. And we have great ways of doing that. We have a, a section of our website, which is called Stories Around Scotland, that we ask practitioners to write down their experiences. It can be, a, it can be something huge, it can be equally something smaller, but everything to us is a success and should be shared. People want to know how others are doing their work and it's great to see people sharing that on our stories around Scotland. We share a monthly teacher trainer tip. So if you're involved in something like the PDIT Soul, or even if you're a CELTA trainer, we share other teachers' top tips once a month to help you. But as I said before, we also have a teacher trainer specialist page and there's lots and lots of information on there. We also um, have a long running ESOL aficionados page, which is we like to celebrate stand out um, ESOL practitioners. And we have um, a most wanted lineup, as someone described it the other week, of great people who have great and interesting backgrounds and great stories about how they've ended up in the ESOL positions that they're in. You should take some time to uh, pop in and have a, a read there. Um, when it comes to that, we're also looking for people to nominate colleagues that they have that they think are stand out and should be celebrated. NATECLA Scotland is part of a wider um, body, which is NATECLA. And part of that requires myself as the chair of NATECLA Scotland to sit on the management council for NATECLA as a whole. And um, what I think has been invaluable is understanding how Scotland works in relation to the rest of the UK. We work very differently to the, our other devolved nations and to England. Um, we approach our ESOL differently. And I have to say, it's been heartwarming to go into an environment who up hold and adore our ESOL strategy and for them to see how or how I can share how it works in Scotland and for them you know to work towards their policies and strategies and in, uh, in other parts of the UK. That means that I have been involved as Natecla Scotland with the campaign for the ESOL for strategy for England. I was given the opportunity to speak at Westminster about it and I was so pleased to be able to share the, uh, this idea and this notion of this ESOL strategy and how precious it is in Scotland and how it underpins our practice. It, there are other great pieces of work that Natecla Scotland are involved in, uh, sitting on a new working group called Volunteers in ESOL, and they have launched what is a JISC mail forum. If you have anybody in the audience today that works with volunteers, is a volunteer. There is a new national JISC mail forum that you can be part of, and that's a huge step forward to connect volunteers and ESOL together. 
And on the back of that, I was extremely fortunate to be part of the working group, um, the steering group, sorry, for the framework of good practice that was published at, at late last year. That was um, steered along with um, Glasgow ESOL Forum. What a great experience that was. The feedback outside of Scotland to this document has been unprecedented. What a great working document that's adaptable in many circumstances. So if there's anybody in the audience that was part of that, you should take great pride from that. It has been extremely well received. And one of my other remits is I sit on the board for the Language Issues Journal, which is the Journal of Natekla. And my remit is to source Scottish authors. So I work hard to ask people to write pieces to go into this journal that really reflects the practice that's going on in Scotland currently. We've had some amazing articles because we have some amazing work that's happening in our little country. We also have a long-standing partnership with the ITEFL, ITEFL ESOL SIG as well, which is great. It brings an international flavour and access to um, the ideas that are going on outside of the UK and how ESOL looks in other countries. So, what would I like you to do from now? Absorb some of my information. Consider following our website, which you can do for free. You can go onto the homepage and click the follow us button. And anything we post, information, resources, and otherwise will come straight to your inbox. I'd love it if you consider sharing the work you did in our stories around Scotland. Um, the two presentations today, you could consolidate that into a, a cheeky little story that we could publish. Um, Consider sharing your practice and skills as either a future webinar presenter or a conference presenter. I am hugely passionate about people delivering ESOL, sharing their practice with other people. So do consider that it's not a scary prospect. We are a friendly bunch and the ESOL, landscape, uh, the ESOL community is very welcoming in Scotland. Maybe you'd consider bringing your expertise to our already incredibly brilliant uh, committee. And I would urge you to consider professional membership of a teaching organisation if you work in ESOL. It has brought me many um, advantages and opportunities. Uh, hopefully I have made it into the time frame for DERA. So thank you very much. Lee. Come um, find out about Natekla Scotland and I hope to see you at one of our events very soon. Thank you. Thank you for that, Pauline. Another um, presentation with lots of information that, that we'll get out to you all um, in the next day or two, which has been fantastic. Um, no questions in the chat, but there's a link to the ESOL framework that's been shared, that's been mentioned. Um, if it's okay with you all, what we are going to do is just move on because um, Anne Morgan Thomas had asked for some time at the end. I'm sure there will be questions. Um, what I won't do is I'll, I'll let, I'm sure most of you know who Anne is, but I'll let, I'll let Anne come on in, um, and introduce herself that she's got some um, SQA updates that she wants to share with you that I'm sure there'll be some questions about afterwards as well. So if, if you're there, Anne, that would be great. And thank you, Pauline. Yep. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Sorry for stepping in. And I, I really will be very uh, brief. Um, basically, the, there was an update from SQA last week on the National 4 Added Value Unit. So I'm very conscious that this is not going to be impacting everybody that's on this call. But I have a, a little bit of information and I was going to see if Dara would send it round uh, along with the other information. Basically, SQA reviewed their approach to the assessment of the Na National 4 Added Value Unit and, well, looking for ways to increase the amount of learning and teaching time. I think that's what everybody's looking for at the moment. And what they decided was that if, um, if your students are doing the course award at National Four, so that's the two units plus the added value unit, it wouldn't be necessary for this session to assess the added value unit. So you wouldn't need to be providing evidence for that. 
now I feel very aware that this is coming quite late in the year and many people may already have done it. So I've just got a, a suggestion that I'm happy to email out to people, which is an option for ESOL. I don't think it is necessarily for other subjects, but an option for ESOL to use the evidence for the National 4 Added Value Unit towards one of the other National 4 ESOL units. So I'm, I'm happy just to send that out. And also I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions if people want to email me as well. So I've been as brief as possible, uh, <laughs> completely unplanned, but uh, I just realized that it might be a way of getting that information out to people. And people might be looking for some ideas about um, what to do now that the evidence wasn't required for the AVU. Okay, thank you very much, Dara, for letting me do that. No, that's I don't that's. I want to distract from the other presentations, which have all been great. So <laughs> over to them. No, that's great. Um, thank you for that, Anne. And I'm sure I could see lots of people um, 